Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Here's the bottom line on climbing Kilimanjaro. There's just three things I want to tell you really quick. Number one, you can pay anywhere from $1,800 up to $5,000. We went with a local budget company, not owned by a Western tour agency. And guess what? Our result was the same as everyone else's. Our food was delicious, our team was awesome, and the more expensive companies hire the same guides and porters anyway. Number two, plan to climb for five to nine days. That's because there's really short routes, there's also longer routes. We chose the Lamosho route because it has the highest rate of success. There are some routes that are faster, but they only have a 25% success rate. And the last thing is pay the $50 per person for the private toilet. You'll thank me later. So this video is a little bit longer than the rest of ours. That's because this was a very emotional adventure and I couldn't cut it short. You actually see me get emotional at the end of the video, um, but I couldn't help it. So that's it, enjoy the film. So when we started thinking about how we wanted to start our 18 month journey around the world, we thought it'd be best if we started with something significant, something that would set the tone. And that's when Kilimanjaro came into the picture. So we did the research, we invited friends, and we made the plans. But of course, as you know, things don't always go according to plan. So we thought, we were told to wear short sleeves and, and shorts today because it's supposed to be really hot. Um, we rode the bus to get here to this gate for about three hours and now they're weighing all of our bags to make sure that none of the porters are carrying too much. Um, and it's the rainforest, so it's raining and you can't really complain about that. But, uh, yeah. Day one, our, our bus nearly broke down. It was making some really weird noises. Bus is making a funny noise. <laughs> Kind of like a ticka, 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 ticka. I do believe that eventually today we'll do some hiking on Kilimanjaro. But I'm an optimist. This is, we're at Sheer One Camp. We were all hiking today through what, what you see behind us and I would stop to take video then like hustle back to my friends and I was breathing really heavy and I know that Moshi Town and like Arusha are like three to 4,000 feet and I was like, geez, I am huffing and puffing considering we're only at like 5,000 feet. And then we get here and we're like, oh, this is 11,000 feet. That explains it. So we probably need to take it chill and slow down. It's really pretty behind you. Don't worry about that. We were supposed to be, supposed to be like really hot today. Supposed to be walking through like uh, a rainforest and really hot, but it turns out it got really cold where you could see your breath. This crazy storm came in and just dumped rain on us. Luckily it stopped before we started hiking. Um, but yeah, it was only like a three hour hike today. I think tomorrow's a tougher day for us. I think it was like two hours or I think, one hour. I think our group moves fast. I think we're all pretty fit, so we're gonna be moving quick. Um, oh, so perfect. What, uh, what are we supposed to do with this? Washy water? washy. <laughs> Splish splash, I'm gonna take a bath. Like take our clothes off and take a bath? Yes, Jimmy. All of it. It's cold. Strip down. <laughs> oh yeah, I feel like a brand new person. How are you doing it? This is how we wash ourselves in Comadro. Um, we get a nice warm bucket of boiling water in the morning. It's really nice when you're freezing. Like right now I feel pretty warm just because of the coffee that they made us. I'm pretty happy about this right now. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is 
prescribed to Maggie, but this is his Dymox. You take it um, above 8,000 feet because that's when altitude sickness can occur and we're all feeling kind of loopy and winded. It's a preventative measure. You don't take it when you start to feel sick. So Maggie's taking one, uh, Alejandro's taking one. I don't know if Lily took one. No. no? So I'm going to go ahead and take one. Um, what, as I understand it, what Dymox does is it, it essentially acidifies your blood and then um, by acidifying the blood, your body tries to treat that and your liver treats it or whatever, but it causes you to breathe faster and deeper, like naturally, just, you know, because we're not breathing fast enough or deep enough right now. We're breathing like we're at sea level because we're from Florida. Um, and this pill is going to acidify my blood and then my body's going to breathe fast to get all that acid out and get more oxygen. The side effects, their only really concerning side effect is it makes you pee a lot. But, hmm. TIA. TIA. So here's what I know about Kilimanjaro. And since we're on day two and still in good spirits, I'll go ahead and tell you guys. Kilimanjaro is the tallest freestanding mountain in the world and the tallest mountain in Africa, the entire continent. So freestanding means it's not part of a mountain range. It's just a volcano mountain that just rises up out of the plains of Africa. Uh, something like 20 to 25,000 people climb this mountain each year. So it's, it's doable by pretty much anybody. But I know that 30 to 35,000 attempt it. So you're looking at 20 to 30% that don't make it on this mountain. Kilimanjaro would translate to something far, and you do have to walk a lot. We covered a lot of distance today. We're gonna to cover a lot tomorrow, um, but it'll be worth it. I think so. And I think, I really think, bottom line, anybody could do this with just a little bit of preparation. Well, for lunch, provided to us by our dear friend, Sebastian, it shall be, I think, soup. <laughs> leek soup, leek soup. Leek soup. Leek soup. And grilled cheese sandwiches and queen's cake. We were a little pretentious in this fact. Watch the rope. Um, where we were like, I would like my own private toilet instead of using one of the squatty potties that everybody else uses. So this is the burger. What you do is you cross this up and down, fill it up. Um, so like if you go number two, you have something to go into. And then you do your business and then you pull this handle. I like this option a lot better. So I asked Maggie to get the camera because because 10 minutes ago I was not wearing my shirt and it was this weather was beautiful. It was like 72 degrees. And the temperatures dropped like 30 degrees, 20 degrees at least. No, 10 degrees. The temperatures dropped <laughs> at least 10 degrees. <laughs> Sorry, we're at altitude. At least like 10 degrees in like five minutes and all of this was beautiful and clear and now Maggie's gonna show you what's in front of me. These clouds are just, they're coming from all sides and they're dark and they're angry looking and we don't like it. Kilimanjaro has no chill. Like this, this is a serious mountain. This is, this is, there's just, there's just no preparing for this. You just can't prepare yourself for this kind of weather. Wageni, wakari bishwa, kili manjaro, akuna matata. Ele na mama, kume kweli unamona, ya ya. 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 Ayo mama, ayo mama. Ayo mama, ayo mama. Sorry, I think I took your cup. I'm not really. Okay. And they've started taking our blood oxygen level. While we were hiking, Paul said anything above 60 is considered a good number. Anything below 50 means you're probably gonna get taken off the mountain because you're about to die. We were all above 80, I think. Is that right? Yeah. That's the top number. Lily had a 90% blood oxygen level because she's 85. super fit. Um, our resting heart rates are cause for concern. <laughs> As I sit here, my heart is beating 84 times per minute. Usually it's resting around mid-50s, 60, 
So it's kind of like we're doing light cardio constantly, okay. just sitting here. Essentially, he, he basically implied tomorrow's gonna suck. And he said, if you have to vomit, just pull over and vomit. It's normal to feel headache. Don't have like that. It's normal to feel nausea. Okay. Vomiting. If you feel something vomiting, do that. Don't have like that. 15 minutes will be a new one. Really? Yeah, for sure. So if you feel like you want to vomit, just go, go ahead. Do and vomit. that. <laughs> do. Don't have like that. I've been really? drinking water. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and then when we'll be in Lavata, we'll try to find. The Barranca wall is definitely a wall. Straight up. Kind of technical, hard to climb with one hand and hold a camera on the other hand. <laughs> what a nerd. <laughs> assessment Mike do you think your shoes gonna make it to camp I'm hopeful yeah I think we're gonna make it Got some major separation issues camp and uh, found out there's a cobbler at the camp so he took him from me <sighs> no different kind of cobbler uh, but he took them stitched them up uh, with actual like, thick thread um, I paid him 20 bucks and they feel pretty good I think they're gonna make it and he said they would guarantee that they would make it to the top so mm. we'll see it's better than Nike gives you oh. Okay, so we just finished our trek up to up to base camp of Kilimanjaro. I'm showing 15,260 feet elevation. We're going to uh, rest, have a have a bite to eat for lunch, and then rest some more, have an early dinner, and then and at midnight we're going to wake up and we're going to push up to 19,000 whatever. Dinner was delicious, and they gave us our pre-summit briefing. Um, they said, don't let us down. <laughs> I've been getting ready while Maggie's been sleeping because this windstorm woke me up and they're gonna come officially wake us up in like two minutes because it's, it's go time. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go for a little walk at nighttime. Are you happy? Super. Excited? So when everyone starts on summit night, there's a ton of excitement because this is what you've been training for, this is what you've been waiting for, you're about to be on the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. But that excitement only lasts for about 15 to 30 minutes because it starts getting colder, it gets windier, and guess what? You get tired and you start feeling sick. But somewhere in the middle of that six to seven hour climb, you start thinking back about all the moments you shared with your friends, the meals, the laughter, the struggles, the pain, the joy. And you think about the porters that are carrying your gear this entire week just so you can get to the top of this mountain. And maybe you think about your family back home, what kind of person they've raised you to be and how they support you and you realize that the only way to properly end this adventure, the only way to tie up all these memories is at the very top of the mountain with your friends, with your wife, with your family, whoever you're climbing with. And that's kind of what keeps you going. So we just, ah, we just summited 
Mount Kilimanjaro, 19,341 feet. We left base camp at midnight. Um, the sun's coming up now, so it took us about six hours. Six grueling, very tough hours. So I would say summiting Kilimanjaro, it's hard. It's not meant to be easy. We wouldn't do it if it was easy. It was hard. Maybe that's the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, but just an awesome experience. And when we <laughs> we came up, and I get emotional right now, we were all just kind of crying. Like, <laughs> I don't know why, I think just because it sucked so bad. I think I'm just thankful to have good friends and a wife that'll do this with me. Kuni la nyama, 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 kuni